Today, we will review the updates I made to my PTP Lending portfolio in March. The information presented in this video will give you an idea about the portfolio's current performance. I will also share my insights which might help you optimize your return in PTP Lending. Remember that nothing in this video should be considered investment advice. The PTP Lending space is changing rapidly and there are many factors that you as an investor must consider to avoid losing money. Monitoring the events surrounding the platform you are investing in and watching our monthly performance updates will help you lower your risk and increase your return in the long run. So let's dive into the portfolio update. This table shows the outstanding portfolio amount as of the end of March. There have been a few changes compared to the last month, so let's give you a quick update. On Peerberry, I redeployed the uninvested funds, increasing the overall outstanding portfolio. Most funds are invested in Romania, which is not ideal for diversification. Still, since loan availability on Peerberry is limited, one cannot be too picky and an equal split across selected countries might be difficult to achieve. Apart from that, the platform continues to repay war effect loans, which is not the case for all platforms in the industry. On Estate Guru, I did not redeploy the repaid principal, which decreased my exposure on the platform. Around 77% of my remaining loans on the platform are defaulted. What's interesting is that many of them came with a low loan-to-value ratio, mostly below 55%, and a rather low interest rate, which should represent a lower risk. At least in 2020 and 2021, this did not seem to be the case for loans on Estate Guru, out of which many defaulted in 2022. On Robocash, I just reinvested the principal and interest. There were no product changes last month, and while the loan availability is somewhat limited, their performance is consistent. On Esketit, I could only reinvest about 95% of the return principal last month, which unfortunately led to cash drag. So the decrease in portfolio value is connected to the lower loan availability. The loan volumes for the investments in music royalties, which were announced last year, still haven't picked up much on the platform. Unfortunately, they are also not represented in Escadet statistics, so it's difficult to determine lenders' current exposure on the platform. Last month, I increased my stake on Fintown. The investment opportunities are not as limited as on other platforms, and the interest is always paid on time. While diversification is certainly not as good on Fintown as on other PTB lending sites, the interest is paid out from a relatively stable income stream generated through the rental yield. We might also be seeing more of this type of product on other platforms in the near future. On Craftbeer, I slightly increased my exposure last month. There were no changes on Lande. Many of my loans on this platform are delayed over 90 days or defaulted. If you want more details, you can become a member of PTP Empower at buymeacoffee.com so that you can analyze the portfolio in more depth. So at the end of March, the Austenic portfolio amount was 81,031 euro, 1.13% higher than in February. This portfolio generated 712 euro in interest, 8.59% more than in the previous month. Most funds are diversified across three platforms, Peabody, Asketit, and Robocash. Regarding loan status, almost 76% are current, 13% are late, and 8% have defaulted. The number of delayed loans has increased compared to the previous month. The funds in recovery, which represent the war affected loans on Peabody, have decreased by another 7%. Regarding the loan type, most of the loans are commercial loans, followed by short term loans, real estate loans, and rental projects. The share of commercial loans decreased in favor of short term loans, which are mainly represented by the change in portfolio allocation based on the loan availability on Peerberry. Most loans are issued in Romania, Singapore, Spain, and the Czech Republic. The majority of the portfolio remains unsecured, backed by a buyback and group guarantee. A mortgage or machinery secures the rest. The unsecured portion of the portfolio continues to perform much better than the secured loans, which come with the highest default rate. To summarize this portfolio update, the average investment per loan in March was 128 euro, and the weighted average interest rate remained at 11%. The portfolio is split across 629 loans in 14 countries. So that's been a quick review of my portfolio. If you found the update valuable, hit the like button and subscribe to not miss out on the next video. If you have made any changes to your portfolio, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.